crossing the threshold of 30 a little less scary in tennis now than it was 10 or 20 years ago? I don't know. I don't, I, I don't know how to. I don't know how to kind of try to rationalize what it was 10 or 20 years ago. Um, I, I, it's not something I think about really. The age of the top 10 players and all the players has gone up dramatically in the last 10 or 20 years. I think the game's become a lot more physical. I, I think you have to be a fully grown human to to deal with the kind of the ins and outs of of the physical grind. And I think that's probably why you're, you're seeing what, what you see now. I mean, you have to be able to kind of take a beating week in and week out. And, um, you know, uh, it's not as much about shot making now as it is about kind of uh, movement and, and that sort of thing. Um, Andy, you just enjoyed the Ryan Williams, and you said you were facing his game and your game with a big, uh, big forehand. What did you think about him today? He hit about as many drop shots today as I've ever hit in my career. So, <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, it, 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 he has a good base. I mean, he can create something, you know. And now it's just a matter of uh, he's going to be a little bit quicker if he, if he, you know, I, I've I've dealt with an average backhand for many years and have had to learn how to kind of get around it a little bit and and uh, become a better mover later on. Um, you know, in my career, and, and, and so there's there, there's plenty of things, but I think it's, uh, you know, if you can win free points off, off your serve, it's, uh, it's a good start. Andy, what would you say the biggest differences are in the way that you played today versus when you won the championship here? I think the game has changed a lot. You know, the, the, you probably were able to get uh, two feet under you and, and kind of launch into the ball a lot more then, you know. I, 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 I had a I had a massive massive serve at you know 135 and you know this kid today was hitting that that big so I mean it's just I think I, I think the game's gotten significantly better since then. What do you marvel at most about Rogers' return to number one? Um, you know I was never off the Roger bandwagon. Yeah, I, I wasn't. You know it was never. A, I'm not surprised to see him back there. You know, it's it's not it's not a story for me because you know he he never stopped being the greatest. You know, it, it, it's just a matter of who's got the hot hand. You know, Novak was playing unbelievable last year. Um, you know, Roger was a little unfortunate in the match here last year and a couple of others, but you know the the fact that we can talk about his matches, kind of the negative ones on, we can we can all remember every one of them is is a good thing. You know, so I mean that kind of it's got to tell you something about him. I th yeah, I mean, I, I think any any sort of uh, result, a result positive, positive or negative on a, on a big stage can, you know, when, when their eyeballs on you, people form opinions, you know, and, and you know, I don't think that changes. Um, you know, uh, yeah, I think you get a pretty good reading of someone in in in, in tough moments, and you know, I, I can't really speak to to. Andy and, and and what he's going through, but um, you know, I felt I, I I don't remember much about the post match stuff from Wimbledon, but I guess people liked it back then, and I, I you know I, I don't really remember much. It wasn't something that I was thinking about. I was kind of just reacting to to what was in front of me, and I you know maybe it was a di different side. Andy, one of the things that uh, people don't know so much about you is. Extraordinary grassroots work you do with your foundation. You obviously were inspired by Lance uh, a good while ago, and now there's been that development. Uh, it's done so much good work, and seven uh, Tour de France, and now this. Could you just share with us a little bit what your thoughts are? Well, I think you. I think when you're talking about it, it's tough to talk about it as a whole, with what he's done as far as positive versus what he's accused of doing. Um, from a negative side. I think you have to pick your side of the argument and then, you know, have an opinion. You know, I, I don't think you can have this great, kind of all-encompassing. I don't think it's that simple, obviously, um, regardless of 
what may or may not have happened. Who, I mean, I, I don't know anything more than you guys do, but he has done a lot of good, um, you know, and hopefully uh, that won't change because he is a he's a pretty big symbol for uh, for a lot of people, and you know, um, it, it's almost bigger than 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 his sport, what he's been able to accomplish uh, with his foundation. So you hope that one doesn't rely on the the other. Do you think, do you think that the drug type? Testing in our sport is important to maintain or should be changed in any way? What do you mean change? Well, either intensified or not have them knock on your door at 6 in the morning. So you're suggesting both? I'm asking you what your thoughts are. About I'm fine with it. You know, I'm, I'm not always real thrilled when they show up at 5.30 in the morning. Um, <laughs> but I think it's I think it's necessary. You know, it's, it's certainly not convenient. And, you know, when you, you're, you're trying to have dinner or somewhere and they say, come, come back now and you got to do it, and you know ours is ours is probably better than any other sport, you know, as far as what we have to be accountable for. I mean, I, I've we've had a couple guys get suspensions in, in this sport for stuff that every person buys at GNC or buys at Walgreens, you know, Sudafed, you know, so it's 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 pretty intense. So I I'd rather have it that way than than uh, kind of us sitting around being in that position of not knowing. Andy, you talked before about um, your admiration for Serena. I don't know if you mean this, but um, what's your, what are your thoughts this summer on uh, what Serena's been doing for Donald Trump? Again, you know, it's a, a, I have a hard time seeing how that's a new story. You know, she's she's been great for a long time, and I still feel when she's playing her best tennis um, for the, throughout the course of her career, I feel like when she's been at her best that no one's really challenged her maybe with the exception of Justine for, for a little while. But, um, you know, you, you, you take Serena playing well, I think, against anybody in the field any day. Would you uh, agree with what Ken Fleischer said earlier in the show? She, she said that for her moment, Serena was the best ever. Well, you, it, it, it's tough to, you know, I, I'm sure Steffi would, would argue that. Um, it, it's tough to compare. If you're comparing their highest level at a given moment in a straight-up match, that, that's, that's more of a conversation. But... I'm not sure that Serena would sit here and tell you that you can compare 14 to 22 yet. And you, on the court, you talked about getting to the second week, you know, as a birthday gift, joking around. But at this stage, I mean, is that a very acceptable result? No, it's not, there's no acceptable result. You, 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 you play your second round, you try to win your second round, you, you, you go as far as you want, you know, or as far as you, as far as you can. I don't think we think of it in the context of what's acceptable and what's not. You play a match to try to win a match. Andy, what are your thoughts on the future of um, men's tennis in America? Who are some of the guys that you really kind of expect to be the young guys up and coming? Well, you know, the, I, as we said before, it's not always pointing towards the guys that are 18 and 19 now in, in, in tennis. You know, uh, Isner's impressed me this summer. You know, he's, he's only a couple of years younger than me, but he's, he's coming into his own. So with that serve, and he doesn't have a lot of wear and tear. He hasn't been out here for for 10 or 12 years. So he should have, you know, he, he should have five, six, six good years left. And Sam's been playing better. So I've liked, I've liked what I've seen from the guys that, that we know. Before you came in, Milos Romic was in here, and he says the thing that he admires most about Federer is the fluidity in his game. When you watch Roger, what is the thing that you appreciate most? Um, yeah, flu fluidity is great. Uh, you know, I, I respect the fact that he's, he's he, you know, he, he lost number one, he went back and got it. I mean, he, you know, at a certain point, the way he's able to kind of come out here and be motivated day after day after being, you know, he, he, he's beyond reproach. You know, he didn't, you can't really say anything bad about him, but he still wanted to get back there. And I, I, that's a pretty, you know, it, it, it seems like he's never satisfied. And that's, that's pretty respectable, especially after, after, uh, after what he's accomplished. And you worked very hard, you know, you came out with a big serve, big forehand early on. And then you worked really hard to add things to your game, to deal with the, the way the game was changing. Were you that kind of kid, meaning were you the kind of kid who, who was always adjusting it? Or what, did the game sort of force you into a little bit different than no, the game completely changed, and I, I was able to kind of recognize it. And, and, and it's funny because the things that I, I feel like I get criticized for, I feel like kept me around 
more than a lot of my contemporaries. You know, more than, let's say, I came up with Marat and and and, and Ferrero and you know a couple other guys. And obviously, everyone points to Roger, but we can all point to Roger all day. And if that's the comparison we're drawing, then we're going to end up with the stories we've had. But you know, it's uh, you know, I saw the way the game was going. You have to get stronger and quicker. There wasn't. I don't think there was much room for um, a plotter who could hit the ball pretty hard, right. you know. So um, it, it was a it was a conscious effort at times, and I feel like that's added to to longevity a little bit. Hey, we, we haven't worked with a number of coaches in this career. When does the novelty and the excitement sort of wear off, and when do you sort of know you're in a stable relationship and you know what to expect from that person? I mean, I think you know pretty early on, to be honest. I mean, um, I've never thought of it, I guess, in terms of of uh, uh, of novelty. Um, you know, I, I've been pretty forthright with with my coaches. I mean, even if I haven't seen eye to eye to them, I think they they would tell you that they knew what they were going to get out of me. Um, you know, and uh, it's just a matter of I think each situation is different. You know, with all the coaches, it's, I think it's tough to it's tough to generalize personal relationships. You know. Andy, how do you view a second round matchup with Bernard Tommy? Yeah, I mean, he, he's we we haven't played in a in a tournament before, but obviously uh, he's been talked about for for a while now, and he has a kind of very very good feel for the game. Um, you know, he's able to kind of repeat repeat uh, what he needs to do out there, and you know, it'll it'll be tough. You view him as a serious, a serious talent from what you've seen. Yeah, I mean he's he's very talented. He's he's, he's played well, and um, you know I think now he's dealing with playing well on a consistent basis. I think that's the next step for him. So hopefully, hopefully we can delay the process a week. <laughs> <laughs> there, there's big big raps on him, but you're winning tournaments on the ATP tour. What when he's 16 or whatever, and he's yet to win one. And he's around 20. So is that an evolution? What you're talking about? The evolution of the game. Oh yeah, I mean, I think it lends itself. I mean, you don't see a lot of guys, you know, like let's say Leighton, who was winning it at what, whatever it was, 15 or 16 now. Um, you know, Rafa, I feel like was fully built when he was 17. But you know, you know, beyond that, I feel like it takes a little while to develop. And you know, uh, it's, it's a physical nature. And I don't think kind of the age thing that we've been talking about the whole time. I don't think that's a coincidence. Could you talk a little bit about uh, your coach Lowry and? Sort of what he brings and what, what his real strengths are, and uh, what you appreciate. 